Good morning, everybody. Monday morning quarterback, episode 131. I <clears throat> uh, was just looking back this morning. Uh, Tyler, our video guy, had clipped together uh, a little like teaser for me to post this morning, and I was looking back to see how long we've been doing this, and it's over three years now. So i um, happy to bring you episode 131. Hope you're having a fantastic start to your week. And everybody getting adjusted to the new time slot uh, of noon Eastern here. And um, yeah, happy to have you here. So we, we recently got back from North Carolina. Um, we were down there for the Pit Logic Clash, a big quarter midget race at NCQMA. And that club did a fantastic job rattling off uh, a ton of races in uh, basically a day and a half, um, 260 entries roughly. Um, so it was really good. Happy to be there. Um, glad to support our quarter midget customers. The, the kids on CSI Shocks had a great week. Um, I haven't counted. I think we won seven or so main events. Um, so that was awesome. They gave away championship belts. Um, so really cool. Um, and then our customers won a bunch of races um, around the country, won a bunch of micro races. There was a big micro race out in Arizona, and I believe we um, one wing, non-wing and restricted, um, at that, um, had a great start to the year out on the West coast at Deming Speedway, um, one outlaw and restricted out there, uh, Mario Clauser picked up the Power Eye race, um, over the weekend, um, so a lot of good stuff going on, uh, local sprint car racing kicked off here at Putnamville, and uh, AJ Hopkins won with the new XT shock, and Braden uh, Fox, who's a shock builder here, he grabbed second. Um, so yeah, it was a great start to the season, um, and it's nice and sunny and 70 here, and hopefully it stays that way and um, feels like spring weather and we can get to racing anywhere. So um, today's topic is traditional shock valving numbers and why they're going away. So we talked about this uh, probably almost three years ago, and we continue to get questions about it. Um, and so it's something I wanted to touch on today and, and talk about why com a lot of companies are getting away from traditional valving numbers. Um, really on the big car shocks, on the quarter midget stuff, it's still pretty popular to use the traditional valving numbers. Um, but yeah, wanted to talk about that and why not to be scared of your dyno sheet and, and, and how it's easy to really see what you have. So, um, so yeah, without further ado, we'll jump in. If you have questions, fire away. Uh, more than happy to answer those questions for you, whether it's pertaining to this topic or any topic. And as always, if I miss your question, um, still comment it. And I, I go back periodically throughout the week and try to see if I missed anybody and, and get them answers. So, so forever, shocks were numbered um, one, two, three, four, five, six, and, and on up. And the higher the number, the stiff, stiffer the valving was. And so um, if a shock was a 5.3, most manufacturers, that meant five compression, three rebound. Um, there, there are a few, including uh, ARS, who call out rebound and then compression. But most everybody else is compression and then rebound. And so forever, that was good enough, right? Those traditional valving numbers were good enough. You know, sprint cars ran a five on the right rear for, you know, 20-something years, and nobody thought any different. You bought a five, and you bolted it on. The challenge, um, or, or where we fell short with that system, was um, there had to be some type of tolerance there. So you're going to call that shock a five. Well, what does it mean? What is a five? And so each manufacturer had a tolerance of what they considered a five to be. And when I started CSI way back in 2009, that's pretty much how everybody was doing it. They were using that traditional valving number. And so when we started building shocks, me coming from the IndyCar world of shock building, I needed to know what, what was a five valve, right? In IndyCar, we talked to real dampening numbers. And when the engineer would give me the sheet, um, hey, we're going to Milwaukee this week, and these are the sets I want built up. I mean, it was what <clears throat> true dampening number he wanted it one inch, two inch, three inch, five inch, you know, um, how he wanted the shock built. He didn't say build a four valve or a five valve. So I had to educate myself a little bit. I grew up in short track racing, but at that time I didn't really, wasn't really into the shocks when I was a kid and was racing. It was just, Hey, um, 
car's laid over on the right rear and I had a three on it, let's put a four. So as we started digging into that, I was amazed at how each manufacturer, because uh, when we started CSI, we rebuilt a bunch of different brands of shocks, Penske, AFCO, Pro, um, ARS. Every manufacturer had their own definition of what a five valve was. And that varied from 60 pounds at three inches per second to 90. And that's just a huge spread. Um, so based on the manufacturer, there was a big difference there. And then there was what I would call valving overlap. So certain manufacturers, their four valve might go to 60 and then their five valve picked up at 60. So you might have a four that's almost as stiff as a five. Um, <clears throat> so you got a five that was on the soft side and a four that was stiff or uh, on the stiff side, they were the same thing. So that uh, was a challenge. So we basically dynoed everybody's stuff and then came up with our own tolerance of, hey, this is our target number for a five valve. And that's how we built it for a while. Where we started to run into um, some confusion is, say we had a customer that had switched over from pro shocks to ours. And pro numbers are traditionally on the softer side when they're talking valving. So he would order a five valve and he'd get it from us and he'd say, hey, you know, he compressed it by hand or maybe he ran it on the racetrack. He'd go, hey, um, I don't think my shock's built right. I ordered a five and it just feels a lot stiffer. So, um, he was right. R5 was stiffer than a pros five. So that's, um, about the time that we decided, Hey, we're going to give people the real numbers, but we're also going to try to educate them where that real number comes from and how it correlates to the traditional number. Um, so even today on our website, we have what we call a generic valving conversion. And that is the sheet that we used when we were valving shocks to those numbers. And we still do periodically. If a guy calls and says, hey, I want a three valve, I want a four valve, um, you know, we'll we'll build it to that sheet that I'll, that I'll show you. And then um, and we could mark the shock that way. I would say over 90% of our shocks are, are designated with a corner, left front, right front, um, etc. So if you were to go... Uh, to our website. Let me pull this up here. If you were to go to our website and click on support and resources, and then down here under technical data, you have this uh, generic valving conversion. And that is uh, what we built shocks to and, and what we use. So um, you can see compression and rebound is slightly different. For whatever reason, whenever they came up with that numbering system, um, a straight five was always a little bit stiffer on rebound than compression. So our five, um, our target number was 75 on compression and 85 on rebound. So rather than uh, a window, if you were building a um, AFCO, they might tell you, hey, build a five to between 69 and... 79 that's what we call a five so rather than having that 10 pound window we just shot to get absolutely as close to 75 as we could um, but there is some i mean you can't always hit 75 we might have had one that was 73 and one that was 77 right so the true number so now when you get a dyno sheet from us it's going to have the absolute true number and while we're here i'm going to pull up a shock um in Rorig. And I will show you what I mean uh, by, by the true number. And this will show you what the graph looks like. And then also what... Um, and again, we've talked about this before, but I want to show it to you again. So any here's your zero number where my little cursor is. So any positive number is compression. Any negative number is rebound. Again, we always called out compression than rebound. That was kind of the industry standard. ARS is opposite. So when you get a graph from them, it's actually negative numbers on the top, positive on the bottom. Same thing, they're just calling it out a little differently. So on this shock, you can see it's rebound adjustable because the graph is getting softer on the rebound side. The compression side is relatively the same. Um, if we just look at the full stiff, and then I look at the report, so this right here is what you would get with your, along with your dyno sheet, and that is going to tell you everything you need to know about the shock, 
and more. And so where people get confused is you have all these columns, CO, uh, RC, CC, RO. Well, what that means is um, compression open. So the dynos are so sophisticated, these crank dynos, it can tell you what the force is when the compression shims are opening and then when they're closing and then rebound uh, opening and rebound closing. What we recommend for customers to look at is these last two columns, right? And so uh, this would be your compression average and your rebound average. And the most universal number that everybody talks about in this industry is the three inch per second number. So as we can see here, this shock is 53 compression and 201 on rebound. A rebound number is always gonna show up as a negative. So if we go to our generic valving sheet here, you're gonna see 53, that's pretty close to a four valve on compression, we say 55. And then we were, what were we, 201 on rebound. And so 201 um, is gonna be on the stiff side of a seven uh, for a left front. Um, so a seven, uh, a seven we say is 170, so this is going to be like a seven and a half um, in traditional valving numbers. So again, you can um, you can always refer back to that chart if you're an, an old school guy and you're like, hey, um, I don't know these new numbers, right? I want to learn them, but I'm so used to knowing that I need to run a four valve on the left front. Um, well, now you can go to that chart. I showed you where it was at, and you can see what that real number is. And the reason we like that real number is now we're we're talking a true unit of measure. So anybody who has a shock dyno, if they dyno under the same parameters, um, meaning the same inches per second the shock was dynoed at, it was a, a CVP or a PVP, as long as you're, everyone's dynoing the same way, most of these dynos, they're all going to read within about 5% of each other, whether you have a CTW, a Rorg, a Maxwell. If they're dynoed under the same parameters, um, you're going to get the same dampening number. So any shock guy, uh, any shock tuner that does your shock, if your shock is 75 pounds of compression and 85 pounds of rebound, and your buddy has a shock from another builder, but he gets a dyno sheet and they're dynoed under the same parameters, you're talking apples to apples. Um, if you're using the old number, you might say, hey, I got a five, and then somebody else might determine that's a six because it's not a unit of measure, and that valving number is basically just in the eye of the beholder, right? It's, it, there's nothing to, um, to say that's exactly what it needs to be. When we first started and everyone was using car shocks on, on race cars, um, I don't know, maybe that's how Monroe's or, or Bilstein's or Coney's or whatever those first shocks were in the 70s, that's how they were numbered. And then as more builders came in, we just kind of adopted that same numbering system, but everybody had a little bit different uh, idea of what that should be. Um, and it's no different uh, for our quarter midget folks that are tuned in. Um, our three valve is probably slightly stiffer than an advanced three. Um, tanners, I'm not too sure. Uh, not too many folks run tanners anymore. They, I think they were even softer than advanced when, how they called out their numbers. So if you're going from brand to brand and you're going off of those valving numbers, it'd be good to actually look at the true data. Um, and again, three inch per second is the most common. Um, when you start getting in depth and really looking at left rears closely, we start to look at the one inch per second number um, as well. So if you ever have a question as far as what you have, don't hesitate to call us. Um, when we give you the tuning guides for adjustable shock sets, we put what the true dampening number is. Um, and also remember, if you had a shock that was dynoed at six inches per second versus 10, it's gonna give you slightly different data. So no different than on the engine dyno, if the parameters in which you're dynoing that engine are different. It's going to give you different horsepower numbers. Shocks are the same way. Um, due to the rate of acceleration on a crank dyno, if you dyno it slow versus fast, it can give you a, a slightly different rate. So we're very consistent in how we do that. Um, but different shock tuners might dyno at a different different rate. So, uh, Ori won your first race of 2021. First time on the shocks. Awesome. Um, shoot us a message with um, a photo, and uh, we would love to share that to, to everybody on social media. Um, 
If anybody has any questions, fire away. More than happy to uh, answer those for you. And we're starting to uh, kick off racing about everywhere in the country. I feel like um, most everywhere is racing now, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we all get to uh, continue to race and have good weather and and uh, have a good good summer of racing. So I know we're looking forward to getting out to a bunch of races with our shock trailer um, this year. So hopefully we'll see you guys at one of those races while um, we're waiting to see if any questions come in. I will show you back on our website. If you go to uh, support and track support, there is a calendar here. There's a calendar here that has what races we planned uh, to attend. Um, so we've got a lot of them in there. As you can see, May's fairly busy um, with races. June. So these are all races we plan to have the shock trailer at. So uh, we go to additional races. Like in April, there'll be some local races that we'll attend. Um, but single day shows, we typically don't bring the shock trailer out to. Um, but multi day events. Uh, we definitely like to. So, uh, Spencer Martinez, if I run more gas pressure, is the gas pressure just adding more uh, dampening? Um, yes. Yeah, so you're adding spring rate to the shock when you add gas pressure. So a shock, um, as it sits at ride height, actually has zero force in a traditional twin tube shock. It only generates force as the shock is moved. Um, so when you're sitting there, there's no force. Well, when you add gas pressure, you're adding um, an internal spring rate to the shock. So yes, as you add gas pressure, um, it makes the shock um, react as if it's stiffer. Um, so Scott uh, took a big bike this weekend, landed the car, bottomed all four shock, shocks out. Uh, what are the chances something's messed up? So great question. What I would recommend to do is fully extend your shock and then slowly compress it. If you feel a dead spot or you feel that the shock is softer and then it gets stiff, um, compressing it at the as close to the same velocity as you can. Um, if it ha feels like it has a dead spot or there's a catch at full extension, um, something's probably probably bent a shim or something like that. Um, I don't know where you're located, Scott, but if you're local to us or within a day's UPS, uh, we dyno our customer shocks for free just for peace of mind and, and they know what they got. Um, it's hard to say. Uh, I would say it's 50-50 whether you bent a shim or potentially damaged something depending on how hard it, it landed. Martin, when will we have the spring rubber combo kits in? Um, everything arrived while I was in North Carolina last week, so I got to start putting some kits together. Um, if it's something you want, let me know. We do have uh, we do have everything now. I just actually have to physically put the kits together and then get them up on the website, etc. So um, that that will be on the website this week. But prior to it being on the website, we could we could ship a kit today if needed because we have all the parts now. So. Alrighty. Well, we thank you guys for tuning in. We hope you have a fantastic week. Um, please share the video with your friends um, as not everybody's aware of the new time spot. And um, hopefully we'll see you at a racetrack here pretty soon. Take care.